Good morning to all. It's a very special day for us all. On one hand, we're accomplishing a goal that we set ourselves about a year ago. And on the other hand, we have the pleasure to present our project. We are, I have the pleasure to introduce Luca Palma from Italy, uh, Laura Rubio from Colombia, Ildi Cohen from Hungary, myself, Rodrigo Capriles from Venezuela, and of course, our most important outcome, which is a clever, clever tool. Before um, introducing the topic, I would like you to read the following thoughts which were extracted from a survey we did to consumers. So I would like you to read them and reflect about them. As seen, responsible consumption is a complex topic that needs several pieces that go together and work together. So, consumer awareness, education, companies disclosing their information about their ethical practices and their uh, environmental practices, availability of products in the market, and of course, simple marketing is are pieces that need to go together in order for this to work. So, um, in the actual market, there are too many labels which exist and uh, tend to assess only one part of the sustainability issues. For instance, uh, may, they may be environmental, they may be ethical. So what happens is that when too many labels are in the market, consumers get confused. So the other point is that companies don't really see the, uh, see the um, advantage of labeling their products when, when consumers are confused. So what we propose to companies is that uh, to improve their sustainability performance and gain a competitive advantage in the market through the labeling because that way they, they would capture the, um, the consumers with a very simple label which actually integrates four areas of sustainability. The ethical, the environmental, the social, and the governance. So the way they can communicate, uh, the label would communicate the sustainability status of the product. To the, um, to the consumers, we will also launch a campaign which will raise their awareness. The scope of the project covers uh, crops, which are grains, fruits, vegetables, products made out of these, and it's targeted to SMEs. Um, I would like to share with you uh, some, some figures because of course for, um, for launching this tool, we needed to, to make a market analysis and I would like to share with you the, the results in the environmental and in the ethical awareness. In the environmental awareness, we see that 56% of the world consumers are aware of the impacts that their purchases have behind. Only 13% uh, didn't show awareness at all. In the European Union, 46% uh, of the consumers are aware while 17% didn't show awareness at all. Spain is performing really well in this sense since 54% of the consumers are aware of what's behind their purchases. Um, in the ethical um, area, we see uh, here is a, it's an interesting graph. The blue bar represents consumers which are aware, but the red bar represents actually uh, how, which percentage of the consumers have changed their behavior according to this um, ethical awareness. And we see here a gap which means that not necessarily because consumers are aware actually change their patterns of consumption. Um, nonetheless, uh, Spain re uh, really had um, a good performance in this sense since 62% uh, of the consumers were aware and 47% have changed their purchasing habits, being the country in the European Union which has the best environment for us to launch a tool. Now I will give the pass to Luca. Thank you. Thank you. Now I'm going to explain to you a bit about uh, the methodology that uh, we adopt. The first step that uh, we undertake, uh, it was, uh, it was uh, uh, to assess uh, eight uh, well-recognized uh, tools over the, the market of food and uh, try to select the best indicator throughout these tools 
And uh, this indicator we reframe a bit uh, with our own principles uh, and we came out uh, in the final result uh, with uh, uh, around uh, 100 indicators to assess the market of the food. Uh, among this uh, indicator, then, uh, we, we proceed with uh, a broad assessment. Uh, for every single indicator, we define uh, uh, the stage of the value chain uh, which uh, has been affected from uh, the indicator, uh, the responsible uh, within the business uh, to provide the information and in a case of auditing. Then for every single indicator, we define the KPIs, the K performance indicator is uh, the, the performance indicator that uh, it permits to us to give a mark to every single indicator, to give an evaluation. And finally, we set up a methodology which we called relevance, which is a mark that we gave uh, to, in terms of sustainability, to every single indicator to define from one to five uh, which kind of uh, uh, sustainability level has this indicator, which importance. So one will, uh, whereas it define a uh, non really importance uh, sustain for sustainability, the indicator, whereas five is going to be a must for, uh, for sustainability. Let's think about uh, the labor rights. Uh, a company cannot file, uh, fail in a labor rights indicator, for example. It's a must for, for our principle. All these uh, indicators then we divided uh, in uh, four fields, as uh, Rodri already said, uh, is a social, ethical, environmental, and governance field. Now I just want to give you an um, example of the calculation that uh, we, um, we adopt. In the calculation, we have uh, for every single indicator, uh, we gave one mark from, from uh, zero to four, and then uh, we uh, added the leverage, which is a methodology that we set up. The leverage is uh, a methodology which gives to the positive marks uh, a premium on the mark, and in the negative mark, uh, which was uh, zero and one, um, a penalty. In this way, the indicator, the, the more, most important indicator, cannot fail in, in, uh, in the meaning that uh, the uh, relevance and the leverage will act in the sense that uh, the final uh, uh, grade, the average, will, will be spoiled or give a premium in the case of uh, uh, higher relevance. Just to give you an example, because it's a, a really broad assessment, so it's quite uh, difficult to catch uh, with uh, just uh, a short explanation. For example, in this case, we have uh, um, uh, indicator about environmental impact assessment and action plan for, for prevention and mitigation. If uh, we have a mark uh, two, which it means uh, the, the sufficient from zero to four, so the sustainability sufficient has been met in this case, we gave uh, with the leverage a small premium of 0 0.05. So in the end, uh, the mark which will uh, um, act in the, final, uh, in the final average of the environmental field will be 2.05. In this way, we give a small premium to the mark uh, is uh, an incentive because they are doing well, sufficient, uh, sufficient well, but uh, they are not standing out. In the case of four, for example, we have a premium, which is higher, and the case of uh, failing is, is going to be a really high uh, penalty, which will, uh, will uh, influence uh, the final, the final uh, grade in everything. Now I leave the floor to Laura. Thank you, Luke. So after having this clear explanation about our methodology, you might be asking yourselves, how are we going to deliver all this information to the customers? And we have a very simple answer. We created the Clever Clover label. Since in the supermarket we only have five seconds to catch consumers' attention, we created a very understandable and comprehensive label that has the following features. First, it has a very simple title, which has our brand, our brand and the word sustainability to indicate the customers that this is our main topic. The main figure of the label is a clover, a four leaf clover that as you all know has always positive, is related to positive feelings. Each of the leaves of the clover will be related, related to one of the fields that we previously defined. So the first leaf will be related to environmental issues, the second one will be related, related to social issues, the third one will be related to ethics, and the fourth one 
will be rela related to governance. This red circle that you can see in the middle represents our accepted limit of sustainability, which means that within the circle, the product is considered unsustainable. As you can see here in this gradient line, from the center to the border of the clover and from red to green, the product sustainability increases. So the highest level of sustainability will be outstanding sustainability, which is represented with a dark green. Within the label, we also have a QR code and the Clo Clever Clover, Clover web page for further information about the methodology, about the assessed products, or about the Clever Clover team. And finally, on the right, on, on the right hand of the label, we will have the name of the assessed product. So this is how our, a very good product, an outstanding sustainability product, will look like, all green. But we all know this is not reality, and this is very unlikely to happen. So how does a real product can look like? This is the result of a real assessment we did to a flower product. So here it is evident how the governance field has achieved sustainability, but for instance, the ethical field is, has failed in sustainability and has a very, uh, a very high field of improvement. These gray areas over here represent what the, com the company or the product has not yet achieved in terms of sustainability. So, well, this product evidently can improve. As you can see, this is the solution we have come with um, to prevent this consumer confusion that is actually in the market. So now that we have described all this clever clover tool, you might be questioning or wondering, how are we going to run this project? In order to answer this question, we created this matrix, which measures the own risk against the market risk. And we uh, created five different scenarios in order to choose the best one for our model. The first scenario that we analyzed was the outsourced auditing. This option has a very high market risk due to the lack of brand positioning, and it also has a very high investment cost. So it's not the best option for our, for our business model. Afterwards, we analyzed having a third-party verification, which evidently decreases the lack of brand positioning, but still has very high market costs. The third option that we analyzed were partnerships. As the other group previously defined, we would take advantage of all the partners' resources, including credibility and including funds. So this has a very balanced risk. The next scenario that we analyzed was selling the methodology and therefore acting as consultants for other companies. This has a very low investment, but it has a very high market risk associated to the, um, to the difficulty of fi finding possible client companies. And the last option that we analyzed was selling the tool, which has very low uh, own risk, but we really want to continue with this project, so we didn't take it into account. As it can be clearly seen, the best option for us, for us is partnering. We have thought about different partners, which will let us keep the methodology, manage the tool, and take advantage of their benefits. For instance, we have thought about verifying companies, about public agencies, about media, and about consumer associations. So therefore, with this Clever Clover tool and with all these partners, we're going to have a complete tool that has knowledge, that has advertisement, that has um, credibility, reputation, and funds. Thank you very much. I'll pass the floor to Ildiko. Thank you, Laura. To foster consumers and companies, we will launch the, to make some more responsible consumer actions, we will launch our awareness raising campaign. To start with, we will have a big kickoff event on World Food Day, which is October 16th. And uh, then we will start all the communication uh, element. Our main target group will be Spanish women between the age of 25 and 65. Why? Because statistics show that they take up to 80% of the shopping decisions in a household. But other than only uh, announcing in women magazines, our main communication tool will be the Clever Clever website. As you can see, here you will find a lot of information. For example, you can read about the Clever Clover, what is behind, including our methodology. Here you will find a list of labeled products. 
with all the clever, clever rating with explanations. And here you can even compare that product to other products in the list. To engage better stakeholders, we will start with uh, several two-way communication channels. For example, in the chat, we will use the possibility to react and to, to, to solve doubts in real time. We will use social media up to its fullest to be in constant uh, dialogue with our potential consumers. Here we have some downloadable tips like pocket guides, like customized shopping list, so something useful for responsible consumption. The website will also serve uh, as a, a platform for companies. They can log in in the private area and receive the feedback from the customers uh, about their own products. What is very important for us still uh, to make periodic surveys to measure the increase of the awareness. In addition, we will deliver also awareness raising trainings for focus groups, including also opinion leaders because of their multiplicator effect. The smartphone application will look uh, very similar to the website, so you also only read the QR code with your appliance and receive all the information about the product and you will have the possibility to compare the product on spot just before you take the decision to make the right decision. Please use your power of choice. So have, please uh, have a look on our next video, which is one example of the messages we would like to communicate to you along our campaign. A testimonial. If a child was involved in the production of your meals, just for today, use your power of choice to support a new food era. Look for the Clever Clover sustainability label on your favorite products. After this, to conclude, some of the strengths of the tool. <clears throat> the labeling market is a saturated market but the national initiatives like the Spanish CAE and consumer trends show a positive environment to set our label. This is a unique tool, a unique label, which unifies all the aspects of the sustainability in one simple label. Other than uh, existing certifications and labels, this one gives the possibility to show improvement uh, within time and it enables you to to compare your products to other labeled products of the competitors. We aim to foster a private sector to generate long-term positive environmental, economic, and uh, social impact. And stakeholder engagement is essential. For example, we faced that when we uh, applied some suggestions of surveyed respondents to improve the look of the label. Uh, so we could be sure that our label is understandable, useful, and attractive. What about the future plans? Since our tool is flexible enough, uh, the team considers to expand to other countries. We know that we will face uh, new challenges regarding social, environmental, and ethical issues, but we will customize our tool to the local conditions. We also keep on going with dialogues with other uh, verifiers to gain more technical knowledge and uh, to gain credibility. Other than that, we also consider to um, include other products than only crops, for example, meat and fish in our assessment. Regarding methodology, we might include some new indicators in the future. And uh, at the moment, we focus on SMEs, but the future will be about working with the big players. Also, technologically, we would like to improve, and we want to change our Excel-based tool to a tailored software. 
the Clever Clever team wants to contribute to a sustainable world where every decision counts. Thank you very much. Okay, me? Can I start? I have a couple of questions. Um, awesome job, guys. Uh, no? Uh, congratulations. I think you've done a really interesting job. I, th I really look forward to seeing in supermarkets your, your label and being able to make choices according to your suggestions. I have a question. Um, do you anticipate or have you, have you thought about the possibility of giving brands the possibility of actually improving their system before you go live with their rating? In other words, if this olive oil ranks very low in X, Y, Z, um, before actually publishing it um, worldwide or making the sticker and putting it on, on their product, um, telling them, hey, you guys are ranking really low. Um, it would be interesting for your da 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 da, da and for your business to actually um, improve these standards. Is that foreseen? Yes, actually, <clears throat> since we're going to give a set of recommendations to the companies, if they get a very low ranking first, since they decided to put the label or not, they're not going to publish the label. We're going to give a set of recommendations. They have to improve. We're going to make together an improvement plan. First they improve, and then they can publish the label. But it's the right way to go. Just want to add that uh, for, uh, after the, the first calculation, we act as a consultancy for the company and uh, we provide a sort uh, of a f a final raw result and they can, can take a look on their result and then we can uh, all together try to, to do a roadmap to improve the, the, their performance before they publish the labor actually. So yeah, it was taking account this kind of uh, situation. But does, does this mean that the label would not be published unless the company agrees with, agrees with, with it being published? Um, well, actually, uh, the, the label will be published if the, if the company, of course, agrees. In case of unsustainable grades, as we saw Lara was explaining the look and feel, uh, when you have um, unsustainable grades, we will talk with the company to see if they want to publish or not. Otherwise, we, we set the, the, um, the recommendations. But in case of sustainability, it, it will be nice for the company to publish the results and give the, give the label to their products. Does someone want to add? Yes, I would like to add that this label is considered uh, to be a competitive advantage. So we need the company side. Of course, we want to do good to the company and all the other public or the community. Um, so we need the... Uh, um, the permission of the, the company. We are assessing the company, and if the results are great, then it's even in the interest of the company to publish the, the label. I had just uh, one thought. Uh, basically, this kind of tool uh, is uh, um, uh, undertaken uh, for the, from the side of the company. It's undertaken the roadmap to be sustainable. That's why we need the, the agreement from the company to publish it. But uh, still, we can provide uh, some information about the sustainability. And maybe they can be aware where they are failing. So improve it. That's why it's not compulsory to print it uh, on the product uh, in the first assessment. We can give uh, and plan a roadmap to being sustainable, and then, uh, like this, we can foster the company to uh, undertake this road. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. I think it's a, a wonderful idea. One of my concerns is uh, putting myself into the role of the consumer or the shopper um, how easy, how simple it is to use and the time needed to check through the ingredients of what composes that label. And I'm particularly bothered about governance. 
about ethical things to a certain extent. I think the, the social and the environmental are easy for a consumer to get their head around, but the other two, I think, are more difficult. And yes, we can look at the website, but for an average shopper who just wants to pick up a label, how, how can we um, inform a consumer what those two things involve particularly and educate them about more, make it easy for a user to purchase a label that says something like governance and ethical issues and what they are. Thank you, Lida. Uh, actually, we thought about this, and this came up in, the, in some of the surveys we did, because people were concerned about the meaning of governance, especially. And since in the label we won't have space to, to make them understand what does it mean, we have different channels uh, to communicate what these two fields mean. So through our web page, we're going to explain each of the fields. And since we have this awareness raising campaign, we're going to use that to increase like, the understanding of these two fields. This is actually not a question. It's a suggestion. And because since you are going to launch this, um, I just want to make a suggestion. Your partnerships, I think that's, that's essential what you mentioned. Uh, Multi-stakeholder partnerships, I think, um, are, make us consumers more um, be believe more in, in, in your product. And it's not something, just a partnership with the company. But uh, I think that the more stakeholders that are involved um, with you and in your board, in your company, in your um, brand, the, the more credible it's going to be for us. I just wanted to react on this. That's why uh, the, the perfect option for us was to choose the partnership, as Laura introduced that. And uh, she mentioned we would like to have partners from each area, from governance, from consumer associations, from different organizations, to um, involve all the interest and all the help us with it, and to gain credibility. Yes, well, again, congratulations, and <clears throat> I had the opportunity to be with you during, I don't know, four months or three months, <laughs> and I've learned a lot. I hope that you also learn a lot with this, and I'm going to, to, to make the bad question. <laughs> <laughs> How do you think uh, this, the increase of price could affect to the, to the development of your label in the market? Well, for instance, we, we are giving recommendations to companies and they can improve their efficiency. Efficiency translates into money, into savings, and that way they, they can actually put that money in, in informing sustainability and actually getting a, a competitive advantage in the market. So in that sense, I think the, the tool is feasible from that point of view. Adding to this, uh, we did a survey, a first survey, in which we asked people what they expected from responsible cons consumption. And I, I don't have the percentage with me, but it was around 60% of the people, people were willing to pay for more sustainable products. And also, since we're tackling SMEs, of course we're charging a fee, but that won't be very, very high to keep the price low. Uh, 